And shalom, shalom to all my fellow brothers and sisters out there. It's me again, Damian Power from YeshuaSavesAll.com. Peace be to you in the name of our Father, Yahweh, and our Master, the Son, the Bane of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. So today, my fellow brothers and sisters, we're on a shepherd of Hermas, command number nine. Commandment number nine, pray with unwavering confidence. He says to me, put away doubting from you and do not hesitate to ask of Yahweh, saying to yourself, how can I ask Yahweh and receive from him seeing I have transgressed so much against him. Do not thus reason with yourself, but with all of your heart, turn to Yahweh and ask of him without doubting. And you will know the multitude of his tender mercies, that he will never leave you, but fulfill the request of your soul. That is beautiful. So a lot of people feel, feel like they can't ask anything of him, but our Father Yahweh is merciful. He's merciful. But you do have to obey the commandments. That's number one. Because we know that in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9, it states that um, he who turns a deaf ear to the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Okay, so if you want his tender mercies, you do have to be walking in his commandments, walking in the Torah. So, he says that Yahweh will fulfill the request of your soul, but you cannot doubt. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21 through 22. Yeshua answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, that if you have faith, emunah, and no doubt, not only this miracle of the fig tree will you do, but even if you say to this mountain, be removed, and fall into the sea, it will happen. And everything you ask for in prayer and believe, you will receive. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24. And Simon remembered and said to him, Behold, Rabbi, that fig tree which you cursed has dried up. And Yeshua answered and said to them, Let the faith, the emunah of Elohim be in you. For truly I say to you that he who says to this mountain, be lifted up and fall into the sea, it does not become divided, in other words, indecisive or doubtful in his heart, but believes that will happen. That thing which he said will he will have. Because of this, I say to you, that everything that you pray for and ask for, you believe that you will receive it and it will be to you. So a little bit of faith, as small as a mustard seed, can remove large obstacles. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, emunah, a man cannot please Elohim, for he that draws near to Elohim must believe his existence and that he will recompense those who seek him. Shepherd of Hermas continued, <clears throat> for he, Yahweh, is not like men who remembers evils done against them, but he himself remembers not evils and has compassion on his own creature. So let's go to 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 9 through 19. And this is when David conducted the census, and it was evil in the sight of our father. And David arose early in the morning, and the word of Yahweh came to God, G-A-D, the prophet, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus says Yahweh, I offer to you three disasters. Choose one of them so that I may do it to you. So the prophet came to David and said to him, Thus saith Yahweh, Choose for yourself either three years of famine in the land or three months to be defeated 
before your enemies while they shall pursue you and rule over you or else three days the sword of Yahweh and Yisrael. Now therefore advise what answer you would give to him who sent me to you. And David said to the prophet, God, I am in great distress. Let me be delivered into the hands of Yahweh. For his mercies are very great. But let me not be delivered into the hands of men. So Yahweh sent pestilence upon Yisrael. And there fell of Yisrael 70,000 men. And Yahweh sent a Malak, a messenger, a A N G E L to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, to destroy it. And as he was destroying it, Yahweh saw and considered it and averted the disaster and said to the Malak that destroyed, You have destroyed a great many. Stay now your hand. And the Malak of Yahweh stood by the threshing floor of Onan, the Yebusite. So this matches what the Malak of repentance said about Yahweh having compassion on his own creatures. Okay, the works of his hands. And David knew this, which is why he said, let me fall into the hands of Yahweh for his mercies are very great. But let me not fall, not, but let me not be delivered into the hands of men. Okay, because men, mankind is less forgiving. And even after David's selection, Yahweh turned back his anger. His mercy endures forever. And then Yahweh not remembering evils. Jeremiah, Yeremiah, chapter 31, verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his brother and every man his neighbor, saying, No, Yahweh, for they all... For they shall all know me, from the young, youngest of them to the eldest of them, says Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their transgressions no more. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 11 through 12. And one will not teach his son of the city, nor his brother, nor say, You shall know your master Yahweh, because they will all know me. From the youngest of them to the oldest, and I will forgive them their iniquity and their transgressions, I will remember no more. So you have to accept Yeshua HaMashiach as the son of Yahweh, your, the Savior who died for your transgressions and rose on the third day, and you will be forgiven. He won't remember any of those transgressions, okay? But you have to walk with him, and as we talked about before, uh, not walking willful transgression. There's a difference between willful transgression and ignorance. The ignorance of a transgression. That's in the, one of the earlier messages. So Shepherd of Hermas continued, Cleanse therefore your heart from all vanities of this world. And from the words already mentioned, and ask of Yahweh and you will receive all. And in none of your requests will you be denied what you make to Yahweh without doubting. So first, you see, he prefaces this by saying, cleanse therefore your heart from all the vanities of this world. So let's go to James chapter 4, verse 4 in the Hebrew. O adulterer and adulteress, adulteress, do you not know that whoever, whoever loves the world, he hates Yahweh? So Whosoever wants to be a lover of this world, he himself will be a hater of Yahweh. Those are some powerful words. Don't love the world or anything in it. First John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Love not the world nor anything in it. For whoever loves the world has not the love of the Father in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the body the lust of the eyes, the pride of the world, which are not from the Father, but from the world itself. And the world is passing away, both it and the lust thereof. But he that does the pleasure of Elohim abides forever. So if 
the world passes away and the lust of it in it are passing away, then what's the point of accepting the love, the things of this world? They're both going to perish. We accept and do the will of our Father Yahweh. The believing in His Son Yeshua HaMashiach can keep the commandments of the Torah. When you're walking in His will, then we can pray. We can pray for things according to His will. Shepherd of Hermas continued, but if you doubt in your heart, you will receive none of your requests. Again, but if you doubt in your heart, you will receive none of your requests. For those who doubt regarding Elohim are double soul and obtain not one of their requests. Now let's go over to James, Yaakov, chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. In, in Hebrew, but if there is one among you who lacks wisdom, he must pray for it of Yahweh, who gives to every man, and he himself will also give it to him. But he must pray in faith, emunah, and not in doubting. For whosoever is doubtful, he is like a pair of balances or scales on the sea. You can imagine what that looks like. And this man must not think that he will receive anything from the master. And he who is doubtful is without understanding in all his ways. So in context here, we see that James is speaking of, about um, praying for wisdom here. But the same concept can be applied to anything that you pray for that aligns with with Yahweh's will for your life. If you doubt, you will not receive any of those things. Just as Yeshua says, just as the Malak of repentance says. Shepherd of Hermas continued. But those who are perfect in faith, Emunah, ask everything, trusting in Yahweh. And they obtain because they ask nothing doubting. And not being double-souled, for every double-souled man, even if he repent, will with difficulty be saved. Because that means you're not trusting in Yahweh. Remember what James says in James 1.8. That one who is doubtful is without understanding in all of his ways. Cleanse your heart, therefore, from all doubt. Put on faith. Emunah, because it is strong and trust Elohim that you will obtain from him all that you ask. And if at any time after you have asked of Yahweh, you are slower in obtaining your request than you expected, do not doubt because you have not obtained the request of your soul for invariably in every case, it is an account of some temptation or some transgression of which you are ignorant that you are slower in obtaining your request. So let's look at that. He said it could be some type of temptation or a transgression that you have done out of ignorance is the reason why you have not obtained your request when you thought that you would receive it. So let's look at James chapter 1, verse 13 through 17. But let no one say when temptation comes on him, this comes from Yahweh. For Yahweh does not tempt man with evil. And he is not tempted by anyone. Only everyone is tempted when his desire overcomes him. And afterwards, if he accepts the desire, that causes the transgression. But the transgression, when it is completed, causes the death. Do not go astray, beloved brothers. Every good gift comes from above, from the light of the Father. And with him, there is no change, nor alteration of light and darkness. Second Baruch, chapter 54 Verse 19, and Adam, Adam, is therefore not the cause, 
except only for himself. But each of us has become our own Adam. In other words, we have nobody to blame for our actions except ourselves. Each one of us has the ability to choose the blessing or the curse, life or death. So if you don't receive what you pray for on account of a temptation that caused you to transgress, then you cannot blame Elohim for that. As the Malachi repentance says, still don't doubt, don't doubt it. It just means that the prayer has been delayed because of this, okay? Or if you did something unknowingly, now let's look at some transgressions of ignorance, something unknowingly, it's in the Torah. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 1 through 2, and verses 13 through 14, just to give you the context. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel, saying, if a person shall transgress through ignorance against any of the commandments of Yahweh concerning these things which ought not to be done and shall do any of them. You see that? So now let's go to verse, verses 13 through 15. And if the whole congregation of Israel go wrong and the thing is hidden from the eyes of the assembly, in other words, unknowingly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of Yahweh concerning things which should not be done and are guilty. When the transgression which they have committed against it is known, then the whole congregation shall offer a young bullock for the transgression and bring it before the tabernacle of the congregation. So, when you transgress out of ignorance, you're still guilty, okay? But he forgives. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. And if any person transgresses and commits any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of Yahweh, though he does not know that he has transgressed, yet he is guilty and shall suffer for his iniquity. And he shall bring to the priest a ram of value without blemish out of the flocks for a trespass offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him for his ignorance and erring, even though he knew it not, and it shall be forgiven him. So like I said, there's a difference between willful transgression and an ignorance transgression, you're still guilty either way, but you don't want to do something willfully. What he's saying here is these people have done it unknowingly. They ignorantly transgress, but you're still guilty. Okay. So the point is that Yahweh is never to blame if you haven't received your request when you thought you, you should have. So don't start doubting. Shepherd of Hermas continued, Wherefore, do not cease to make the request of your soul, and you will obtain it. But if you grow weary and waver in your request, blame yourself and not him who does not give it to you. Consider this doubting state of mind, for it is wicked and senseless and turns many away entirely from the faith even though they be very strong. So look at this. This happens when people believe that they have strong faith and they pray for something and they don't get it when they think they should have received it. Then they begin to doubt whether Elohim exists or whether he hears them, which causes them to fall away from the faith and they blame Elohim as if he has forsaken them when he is the one who has been carrying them the entire time. Okay, remember the footprints in the sand? Where were you? He says, that was, I was carrying you the entire time. Those footprints in the sand was me carrying you. That was not your footsteps. That was me carrying you. He never fors forsakes us. He never left us. Okay? Don't doubt. Don't waver. Don't give up. And don't put a time limit on when you expect to receive something. Just focus on your faith. Believe that you will receive it and you will have it. 
Shepherd of Hermas continued, For this doubting is the daughter of the devil and acts exceedingly wickedly to the servants of Elohim. Despise then doubting and gain, the, and gain mastery over it and everything. Clothing yourself with faith and munah, which is strong and powerful. For faith promises all things, perfects all things, but doubt having no thorough faith in itself, fails in every work which it undertakes. You see then, says he, that faith is from above, from Yahweh, and has power. But doubt is an earthly spirit coming from the devil and has no power. Serve then that which, is, which has power, namely faith, and keep away from doubt which has no power, and you will live to Elohim. And all will live to Elohim whose minds have been set on these things. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. For his soul does not delight in iniquity, but the righteous man shall live by faith. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 through 10. And Yeshua entered Capernaum, a certain centurion approached him and was beseeching him and said, My master, my boy is lying at home and is paralyzed and seriously in pain. Yeshua said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, My master, I am not worthy that you should enter, enter under my roof, but only say the word and the boy will be healed. For I am also a man that is under authority, and there are under and there are under my hand soldiers, and I say to this one go, and he goes, and to the other one come, and he comes, and to my servant to do this, and he does it. And when Yeshua heard this, he was amazed. And he said to those that had come with him, And I say truly to you that not even in Yisrael. Have I found faith like this? When we come to Elohim in prayer, let us remember to have this kind of faith as the centurion did. So that the things that we ask for that are in line with our Father Yahweh's will for our lives will be obtained. Hallelujah. All praise be to our Father Yahweh and His Son Yeshua HaMashiach. And um, I pray that this helps somebody, strengthens their faith. And as always, may our Father Yahweh bless you. In Yeshua HaMashiach's name, Shalom.